Hi, my name's Vin Sheehan and today I'd like to talk about Beethoven's Second Symphony um, in D major. And I'd like to go through each of the four movements of this famous symphony looking at how the music's put together. Because I do believe that having some understanding of form in classical music can greatly aid our appreciation and enjoyment of it. Um, in 1802, Beethoven was in a bad way. He was living in Heiligenstadt and um, he was, he, he'd come to realise that the deafness that he'd began to experience was worsening. And uh, indeed he was beginning to think that it was incurable. And you can imagine his pain, his sense of pain, his sense of anguish, his sense of despair. This great musician, this great composer, uh, this great performer, this great improviser. He was suddenly, um, he felt that his life was falling uh, apart around him. He was losing his uh, sense of hearing, which of course for any musician is a tragedy. Beethoven writes to his brother Karl in the famous Heiligenstadt uh, will. Um, he says, as the leaves of autumn fall and are withered, so likewise my hope has been blighted. Beethoven was in an extremely dark place. Having said that, as is with the case with many composers, songwriters, creative people, the work does not always reflect the, uh, the state of mind of the creator at that time. Um, Beethoven's Second Symphony is not this tragic utterance uh, like perhaps the opening of the Fifth Symphony, but it's a rather sunny, carefree, exuberant work. And you get this, this sense that Beethoven is really flexing his, uh, his uh, compositional muscle here, because um, compared to the First Symphony, everything is greatly expanded. Beethoven was already kind of testing the boundaries in the First Symphony, but with this symphony, you know, written not very long after the First Symphony, Beethoven really is expanding his horizons. There's quite a jump between the First and Second Symphonies. Um, and uh, the music's full of high spirits, humour. Um, it's full of perhaps Beethoven thumbing his nose at uh, his encroaching deafness, perhaps. Uh, it was composed between 1801 and 1802. It was premiered in 1803 at the uh, Theater and der Wien, uh, as was the case in many of Beethoven's works. It was premiered with the Third Piano Concerto and, and his Oratorio Christ on the Mount of Olives. And uh, like the premiere to the Fifth and Sixth Symphonies, the concert had this uh, rather perhaps over ambitious um, but it was a big event and I think Beethoven relished this opportunity for his music to be heard. There's a big long rehearsal in the morning. Um, it turns out that the symphony had mixed reviews. Not everyone was a big fan of it at the time. But of course, like the other eight symphonies over time, it's, it's come to be seen as a masterpiece. The work begins with this uh, long movement in sonata form with an introduction and a lengthy coda. And the introduction um, begins like this, in a rather dramatic uh, way. Beethoven's really announcing himself here. how it begins, a real kind of grand opening in this introduction. The introduction actually has some rather surprising um, slides in key, as you'd expect with Beethoven. We have that bit there, moving to B flat. And we have a third section as well uh, in the introduction. And 
and so on. And then uh, this rather grand lengthy introduction eventually uh, leads us into the first subject, this really sunny idea. Uh, Allegro con brio, firmly in D major, like this. That kind of thing. Eventually we uh, come into a transition, and then eventually we come to the second subject. A rather delightful idea like this in the uh, dominant A major. <laughs> And so on. Um, and then we come to a codetta based on the first subject. We then have a development where the first subject is uh, heard in counterpoint in, uh, uh, in the minor mode and we hear the second subject as well in uh, G major, quite in a subdominant. It's rather of these rather Rossini-esque um, triplets involved. There's a lot of humour I think, a lot of uh, kind of opera buffa in this music. The recapitulation is quite standard, we have a different transition, but then we have a massive coda, um, and that's a feature of this symphony, the finale's got a massive coda as well. It's 58 bars or so, of, um, which leads to this great climax where we hear these repeated C's, and then this great suspension on the trumpets before a great close in D major. The second movement, like the first movement, is in sonata form two, um, larghetto, and uh, begins like this in A major, the dominant key. have a corresponding phrase to that as well. And so on. Very beautiful uh, first subject. Then we have this rather charming transition idea. Eventually that takes us, uh, at the end of the transition actually, we have this rather um, distinctive rhythmic idea. Um, which reappears in the development actually. And then we brought on to this rather spacious and lyrical second subject. lovely idea. And then we um, end uh, the second subject group with another rhythmic idea, a bit like in the transition. And then we have a codetta which um, is based on the first subject with these charming uh, horn calls. Uh, really uh, one of my favourite moments actually in this movement. The development of this movement um, begins in the minor with uh, the rhythmic ideas taken from that um, second subject, which builds to this great climax. Um, and then we come back to the recapitulation, um, which is pretty standard actually with a coda based on the first subject. The third movement is a scherzo, and um, as you'd expect with Beethoven, there's some. Um, kind of harmonic surprises. We begin uh, with this idea, rather um, cheeky. And so on. Uh, there's this idea as well, where we move into um, kind of a B flat uh, major, I think it is. And 
and so on. And kind of those F naturals there really at odds with the predominant uh, D major tonality. Um, the trio um, is like this, rather more relaxed, rather uh, more intimate as you expect. Go like this. And then we have this um, rather mock, tragic uh, comedy moment, kind of unison texture. Um, kind of again, an, an unexpected uh, change of key there before we go back to the trio and in the A section, uh, the scherzo is repeated. The final movement is one of uh, Beethoven's uh, displays of, uh, of his humour, his, uh, his uh, comedy, I think, his high spirits. I mean, you'd think, you'd expect this symphony, wouldn't you, to be extremely tragic, like I said at the beginning, because of his encroaching deafness, but this symphony doesn't uh, play along with the rules. This is uh, full of rude humour. Uh, I saw an interview of Roger Norrington, a conductor once, and he said that this uh, first subject of this Sonata Rondo movement is almost like a practical joke, something like a whoopee cushion. Um, we kind of hear this. Uh... And so on. I've even been heard it being described as some kind of uh, show of flatulence even, or uh, belching. I'm not sure I'll go along with that, but um, there we go. It's full of, uh, you know, a kind of funny uh, idea to begin this movement. Um, we have this uh, transition as well, heard on the cellos first, I think. So. And so on. Then eventually we get to this B idea, which goes... Da, 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 and so on. Um, we have a, um, a transition then, uh, we go back to A, and then we have a development section, which we call C, and it's pretty much based on that first comedy leap, you know, from right at the beginning of the A idea. Um, the development's chiefly focused on that. We go back to A, transition, we hear B in the tonic, transition, and then we have this massive coda. Um, a bit like the finale of the Eighth Symphony, actually. Another it's kind of similar idea. Um, begins uh, the same as A. Uh, there's some ideas from the transition as well. But it's one of those things you keep think it's going to come to an end. A bit like Haydn, maybe. You think it's going to come to an end, but then Beethoven's got another bit he's tacked on, and then another bit, and then another bit. He keeps surprising us all the way to the end. And that uh, finishes this uh, rather exuberant, highly energetic, um, ebullient and uh, wonderfully uh, fresh sounding symphony to an, um, a joyous close. I'd like to thank B.M. Almeida for suggesting that I look at this symphony and if this is your kind of thing, please uh, click like and subscribe and if you have any suggestions of pieces you'd like me to look at, please put them in the comments below. I've also put an outline of the uh, structure of the symphony in more detail with bar numbers in the description. Thanks for watching. Bye.